In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. Well, that's great. Thank you, listeners, for joining us on another pointless automotive podcast, hosted by yours truly, Frank and Chadwick. Hi. How are you doing tonight, Frank? Fantastic. How are you, sir? Well, I think that's the cue to Papa. Miller Lite. Uh, I beat you to it, except without the Miller Lite. Um, mm. I, I popped a can of Hetty Topper, which is like Northeast uh, premium adult beverage uh, Ooh. in a can. Um, yeah, it's no Buzz Balls, but it'll do. Um, oh, buzz Balls are fucking great. And I'm, straight, by great, straight. I mean disgusting. First off, they're pure poison. Secondly, have you seen they have like big ones now where it's like a pint size? It's, it's horrible. Like, it's like the size of a like a, an Olympic like official softball. Mm. yeah olympic softball my favorite sport mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you and me both so um, my friend it's uh I... at the time of recording we are nearing the end of the year uh that year being 2023 and we are getting super close to 2024 but i want to look back edging if you will yeah <laughs> edge lording to the uh, yes the precipice Mm-hmm. Uh, point of no return if you will the event horizon yeah <laughs> yeah once you come there's no going back um oh well <laughs> True you can try you can try and put it back i don't know if you can have a whole lot of success yeah my early 20s maybe um so we are gonna talk about the year in review and uh, kind of open forum non-topic not too much of a stretch for us but uh just kind of you know let's reflect on this year my friend um mm-hmm. we buy and sell a lot of cars i figured we talk talk it up at the beginning how many cars or do you need some time to collect yourself on this one Frank? man um, sort of. So th- real problems. It, and yeah, well, I mean, definitely. But like, okay, so 2023, just off the rip, 2023, cars that I'm pretty confident I bought this year. I don't, here's the thing. You, you are you are far more of a fastidious uh, organizer and note keeper than I am. Maybe that is your, um, maybe that's your, your military background, you know? Got to keep Perhaps. everything organized. I, I'm, if you can't see the background behind me right now, <laughs> Uh, I am far more um, shoot from shoot from the ass, and so <laughs> as far as as far as well, you know, um, <laughs> with regards to cars that I'm, I I feel like I purchased <laughs> um, this calendar year. So I believe it was early in the year is when I purchased the little green nine twenty four. Mm, yeah, uh, I think when did we Ooh. when did we go hang out with the DWA guys? Was that like January when we were was a that guest this on year? Pod? Was that this year? Because that, that was like, I bought that car like a couple of days prior. No, maybe the, no, it was the day of. That same day, I, I bought it and picked it up and got it smogged. We drove it down to Santa Cruz. Um, So let's find out right now when they post. Okay, that. we'll do it live. I'll just talk about that car anyways. And you can call me a, a liar and a, and a fraud. Of um, course which I am, but you can call me out on it if, if it's official. Um, 10 months cool little ago. Car. Okay. Months ago. All right. So That's what good. I thought. It felt like January, February. I remember it was not rainy, but like rain threatening either way. We um, were one of their most viewed uh, podcast episodes. I don't, I refuse to believe that. It's actually true. I looked at the view count on, on the, on the tubes. Uh huh. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I'm glad, like, I just assumed we completely sullied their pod. Um, I mean, that's not saying we didn't do that, but and and that, I I I feel like the term sullying someone's pod has like a wildly different definition like twenty years ago. Like it'd be some some weird space accident. Um, <laughs> but uh, so that car was was roughly ten months ago was when I purchased that. Then um, I really I I'm a sucker. You you and I are cut from the same cloth in the way that we're both kind of suckers for bad cars. Yeah. And that car's not bad, bad. It's not great. There's some really, it's really cool in a lot of ways. It's, it's, um, it's endearing for sure. It's very endearing. Very endearing. Car. That one particular, the, the story, yeah. the color, just the, the, the ghost in that machine is very endearing. Um, and I still have it. I have not, mm. I've, it has not moved on yet. Um, but I, that's a car I purchased this year. 
The other one I know definitively that I purchased this year is the uh, the Celica Supra. So yes. the 84 Celica Supra, which at I have not pace, done much with. I've put a battery pace. in it. And Frank, we're gonna put... be at, we're gonna be at Lord of the Rings time at this pace. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, first off, <laughs> fabulous film. Secondly, that that particular non sequitur can take us very deep down the rabbit hole. That will just stretch this out even longer. And my I know favorite... you're into being stretched, but <laughs> my favorite line is the one where the orcs are the urukai are like men flesh. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> man flesh, line. which is which is what certain uh, swaths of our audience prefer to um, refer to this podcast as gentlemen's but club. Yeah, the 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 gentlemen's club, but like. So the, the Celica Supra I bought this year, yes. which I haven't done with, I put fresh tires on it and oh. I put a battery in it. I had a new battery when I got it, but it, it was not long for this world. It, 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 it killed itself. So Oof. that is it. I'm undecided on where to go with that. Um, I keep waffling. I'm probably going to sell it because I have too many things and I want to, I've got a wandering eye. So hmm. um, it's a good car. It's going to be a great car for somebody. Maybe there'll be an opportunity to take it on some sort of, rally breakfast club or something just get one good shakedown in it um, yeah. before i sell it i think that would be fun i put the tires on it it runs really well um and it doesn't have ac so this will be the time of year to do it um mm. so i might do that um i think that might be the only cars i purchased this year Ooh. i think i did officially the, Le- the s oh, oh. The, lexus. The, Le- the lexus was this year for sure right yeah you're right the, Le- the LS, the LS, LS 430 was this year. Yeah. Um, I sold the uh, Civic Hybrid Manual this year. That's right. Um, which I had bought the year previously. So that is when I sold this year. <laughs> I think that's it. Although I do like be the Lexus. I am. It is growing. The more I have it, it's just mm-hmm. so damn easy. It's so damn comfortable. Great car. I drive other cars that purport themselves to be luxury cars in the same era. No. Like I just I just drove, I don't know, 20 miles in a an 06 Volvo S80 with huh? 40,000 miles on it, which is pretty comparable. It's there it was their full size luxury offering at the time. Comfortable car. Comfortable car. It was it was for what it was. I think that's the very last year of that original ish S80. Mm-hmm. Um that that's 90 before, but the S80 um good car it's the two the 2.5 turbo but it, it is not as the the level of luxury and and just material quality and the fit and finish and just how smooth that car is yeah it's nothing compared it's nice but it's not it's not anything compared to the ls it, it's it's a, a different category entirely um but yeah so the ls has been great i think that's it i did get the officially although it's really nothing has changed uh, the s2000 is now technically mine because my mom gifted it to me um but in the summer um but it's not mine i'm just shepherding it until it's my son's mm. and it's it will always be her car anyway so it's, it's really just the, the the responsibility of keeping it registered and, and well fed has been transferred to me that's really the only thing that has changed and i'm okay with that zero complaints there it's incredibly gracious of her and uh we do fun things with the car and i do fun things with the car but not enough um great car great car i need to drive up more i have too many other cars which is why i need to sell some of them so i can drive that car more um but i think that's it what about you sir yeah, so what I was 23 involved. <laughs> so, yeah, bought a few cars this year. I was keeping tabs and uh, got up to seven, purchased seven cars Ooh. this year, which I thought was way lower than what it actually felt like. Uh, my <laughs> wife was sh- shaking her head no, saying that is you're saying seven is not enough in one year. But eh. so uh, my year started off with a Bonneville SSE supercharged right off the rip. Uh, mm-hmm. Super cool car. I, uh, you know, can't speak nicely enough of that. We sold that one on that cars and bids. Year, huh? Yeah, and it went it went for a good price. I think they the the owner got a really good deal on it. Uh, and yeah, it, I think it's well it bought, a, well sold. Yeah, well. really really clean car. Uh, followed that with a Mini Cooper S, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, 05 with eighty eight thousand miles in the right color, British racing green, six speed manual, no sunroof. Uh, what a fantastic little car that was. I yeah. uh, so, sold that off to a mini enthusiast. It was his fourth mini, and he once he because he said he test drove five other minis. He was looking for like 
one of the uh, the later run. Uh, I guess supercharged ones are a lot better than the early ones. So he was looking for one. He wanted the low mileage. He wanted British Racing Green, but he tested a couple and he said, man, this one's sorted. And it was. Yep. So that was a really, I, I put too much money into that car. Uh, <laughs> What's new? Followed that exactly. Uh, Volvo C30 R design, which was super yeah. cool, insanely hard to find one of those. The before the Great. facelift, which I actually like how they look, but the six speed manual with the R package is extremely mm-hmm. hard to find. Uh, and I, I was able to source a really clean one of those too. That thing was pretty nice. I think, you, did you see that one by chance or? Um, I kind of don't know. I don't you... think I did. Yeah, it was super. No, because I would have, I would have, I would have hassled you. To drive it because I've driven I've driven a standard C30 in an auto, mm. yeah. That which, manual, you know, power that. power is roughly the same, I think. But like the just the manual and the suspension and everything else, um, way tighter, way different. And so I would have wanted to get a feel for it. So I know I have not I did not get a chance to see that one, nor will I. Oh yeah, no, unless you see it cruising around again, that was pretty rare. I got a a free car on my list so that didn't cost me anything. <laughs> yeah, Eagle Summit wagon, which is. Still right where I pulled it with a floor jack across my driveway. Brilliant. So it's still hanging out there. Can't wait to bring that one back. Uh, one owner, 200 something thousand miles, five speed manual. Uh, just a real cool, real cool car. It's the uh, Mitsubishi Expo LRV uh, for those Mitsubishi diehards. Same, same exact Let's car. Go. All wheel drive, 1.8 liter engine. Nice little car. Uh, followed that up with the Isuzu Trooper, which absolutely just became my. My sweetheart, I, I put a lot of mileage on that truck, probably more than any of these other vehicles, maybe more than them all added together, except for the mini for the rally and stuff. But yeah, uh, heck yeah. that trooper, God dang, man, it was in pretty rough shape when I got it, <laughs> left a puddle of oil everywhere we went. The paint was pink, chalky pink. You said uh, that was a valve cover on that yeah. was, was, was what it was, right? Believe it or not, the uh, previous owner thought it was the, uh, you know, crank seal in the front. So after he did the timing belt, so I'm like, oh, I'm not getting in there for another time belt. So when I came to do the valve cover, I noticed, I'm like, damn, this valve cover is crusty and it's leaking out the sides. So easy fix, man. Did the valve cover. Killer. Not, yeah, so Love easy that. on that truck too. Uh, you know, did the tune-up stuff. Brand new tires was the most expensive thing. I put some really yeah. nice rubber on it. Uh, and dude, that truck's a joy. You got to drive it a little bit when we did the little photo bit, shoot. A little it's, bit, not an a, anger, but it was good. It's a peach, right? It's just a, just, abs- just a truck. It's such a bygone thing. Like, um, it's it's just a really just, just like the options on that. I really like the stereo that it has in it, <laughs> right? Which is which is the sound of the truck itself. The sound of the truck. Um, it's just such a like earlier stuff of that ilk right like like 70s suv stuff and trucks are far less usable and generally less capable than yep. that truck and far less reliable yep. but to have something like that that still has that extreme u- utilitarian bend yeah but higher build quality more modern materials not super modern materials certainly but like not at all yeah some more modern materials um and 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 just a heightened level of reliability that comes with things like transistorized ignition systems and <laughs> um, fuel injection and, and and things like that. It'll just work and it will always work. Yep. And there's nothing to break and it just the setup of that thing is cool. I love that thing. Um, yeah. I will miss it. Um, you did awesome. well on the sale, I think, which is good. Yeah. Um, it garnered a lot of attention as it should and will continue right. to do for the next guy. Um, cool truck. I like that thing a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's like the perfect storm, right? It's, it's high mileage, but well cared for Uh five speed manual with a two door and the end there. And an 88 is super rare. Like they just didn't exist. Yep. Everybody went to automatic. Everybody went to four door by that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, you know, got the locking hubs. It's just like, like you said, this is a forever truck. You can run this thing forever. Parts cost nothing. Maintenance, super accessible for the DIY crew. For uh, sure. Cool, just a cool truck all around. But uh, I did. I'm happy it's going to a, a loving home. Uh, another truck purchased this year, just recently, GX470. A mm-hmm. little bit of Lexus truck action, yeah, buddy. Dude, I drove it over here tonight. It's like pouring rain. There's lots of standing <laughs> water on the roads. That truck just says "fuck you" to like standing water. Yeah. It, it doesn't care. It shrugs it off. It's all wheel drive, good tires, uh, good ride height, and that all wheel drive system. Like I said, and that weight is just like you get. You feel invincible. Uh, right no it literally they're is um, invincible there's not much that can stop that truck they're so buttoned up um 
so comfy, so, so com- it's like so quiet and so insulated inside, you know, it's just, it's, it's just wild. It, it just, they really knocked it out the park with that truck. So we love that. We put a ton of mileage already. It's supposed to be our like backup adventure vehicle, but we just like, oh, I guess I'll <laughs> take the GX. Um, it just absorbs miles. Like you wouldn't believe, uh, the other one is the car behind me, that Acura TSX, uh, Talk about high mileage, 319,000 miles on that truck, on that car. Yeah, two owners, uh, original paint, it just, it's nuts, dude. Black paint, it's in great shape. The interior is like a 9 out of 10 all day, if not more. Uh, And I'm just doing routine maintenance to get it, like, nice for a daily. Uh, Six-speed manual, which is, like, super rare. And these things are super pricey. Uh, These are the facelifted ones, but before they went to the fucking Optimus Prime. Yeah, Yeah, the the hawk face whatever you call it yeah the i was uh, for whatever reason i was pictured as like an octopus beak yeah i don't know why specific to the octopus but (laughs) as opposed to a squid or like a cuttlefish i guess but it's got like yeah to me it's like the cowl that covers optimus prime's face so Mm. what a lovely car the build quality on that guy's car is pretty high i think they did build these very well uh the interior is very cool and black on black works with that car it's just i don't know it's like a little junior executive car and i i love it k k K engine six-speed manual from the gods it's a good little car i think can we can we just appreciate for just a millisecond here the unappreciated concept and general execution of the quote-unquote junior executive car Oh, they were always right? the best. That's like the yeah. three series, the one ninety E, that car, you know, the the T S X. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I, the, I would say the IS, the Lexus IS fits that. hundred percent. Um just just like just to think about like that's what that was. That was that marketing mm-hmm. uh exercise that yeah, an Infinity G twenty. Um oh, that's a great car too. <laughs> just like some are more sporting than others, but like this entry level um like luxury sedan with a bit of a, a little bit of a sporting angle to it. Oh yeah. Which, just such a good kind of a, I don't want to call it lost because there are still some examples out there. Yeah. You know, not the, many. The two series, maybe mm. the CLA, but not really. Um, Yeah. Some of that stuff's still out there. Yeah. I mean, I accurate. appreciate it. They called it the sports sedan. And you know what? I'll say it. 205 horsepower out of a high revving four cylinder is pretty good, good for a, smaller four-door uh sedan yeah what's that weigh like 3200 pounds i'm gonna yeah i'd say like probably just a little south of that actually yeah 32 yeah. uh but that high revving with it and you're paying for the six-speed manual right like if you get an automatic one of these it's pretty cheap the six speeds tend to garner a, a lot more attention and get that double the <laughs> double the cost but i was shopping so i'm you named one of them the infinity g20 to get a G20T mm-hmm. and a manual, like a P11, like a really nice one. Yeah. I was looking at that. I was looking at the IS300 in a manual. And I was looking at these. And all three of those are actually pretty fucking hard to find. I'll be, just I'll be brutally looked, honest. I just looked it up. Curb weight for, uh, I just typed in 06. Yours is a, se- a 7? Oh, wait. Yeah. So 08. Oh, so even. It's the end of the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, they, uh, for a manual, 3257 is a curb. Okay. That's a perfect weight. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. a nice small sedan weight. Um, no modern car weighs that little. That's an actual four four door. Not car. A, not in a sedan. Yeah, not in a sedan. Well, mate, can you get a can you get a mini, the mini <laughs> four door, in uh, in in that weight? Maybe. Maybe. Um, with, not the all wheel drive for sure. Like a Countryman or something. Probably. Do they still do they still sell the Fiat five hundred X or whatever that was? Oh God, that, that might still crazy. actually be in production somehow. Yeah. Um. No, no way, dude. Zombified. Um, but- but every every one of those cars I just named in manual form is way more expensive than the automatic form and exceptionally rare. Uh, and yeah. these are super hard to find rare uh, in manual shape because first off, they were modified. They were all ruined. Because it was yeah. a Honda. It was a K engine. Uh, and the paint and the interior. That's, that's cool. what I was going to say on on those. The perforate, because it's got the perforated leather, seat, leather seats, mm-hmm. right? They would always dry out and then just shatter. Yep, and then you know Honda Honda paint of that era is so weak. Yeah, where it's funny. Other parts of the country they would rust away. Here, the sun would bake off them, and yep. it's really difficult to justify keeping up with your inexpensive commuter car right. when all the paint is blown off of it and just checked away into nothing. And mm-hmm. so, so many of them fell into cosmetic disrepair, which then begot them falling into mechanical disrepair. Yep. So the fact that you have one that's been kept up on both of those accounts, um, despite the mileage, yeah, 
really yeah. cool. Yeah. And the man, like I said, the manual is where the money is there. If you find a manual with clean paint and a clean interior that runs decently and isn't been modified, they are pretty pricey. So, um, I, I got quite a steal on it, but that's it, man. Just seven cars this year. I feel like I'm an underachiever, <laughs> you know? So I know, I know some of those that you sold, right? We talked about the trooper, the mini, Dude, the, I can't remember what the Volvo. Yeah. What other ones, did, were there any ones that like you had from yesteryear that you sold? Yeah. The 300 ZX twin turbo. sold this right. year. That's right. uh, boy, what else? I can't, I'd have to go back and look. I know I sold quite a few. I started the year. Was this the year we started with like 14 cars in the, in the yeah. fleet? So, I mean, yeah, I'm down there. We're down. I know uh, the wife and I are down to 10 counting her company car. So technically we own nine cars right good. now. Yeah. I That's feel completely good. naked. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Well, I just, I always, here's a, here's a, a, a tip. Um, one tip, the, um, just the uh, well, well, that's what I'm getting at is uh, the, the viewers at home don't know if you're following along on the YouTubes. Mm. Um, but you are you are always naked from the waist down, except oh. for um sandals. You do wear you do wear sandals. Yep. Um for um you gotta stay uh you got you gotta fight off various diseases and, and you yeah. don't want to contract anything walking around barefoot in your mm -hmm. swamp of a soiled garage there. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> but yeah, you know, I as I, I what what other things did we do this year? So we did mm. um we we did the uh, DWA rally. That was sweet. That was good. Was sweet. Um, you, you went in the mini, which has now been sold. I went in the S two thousand, which will never be sold. <laughs> um, I did one BCR rally in the little green nine twenty four. That was good. Um, I took the same little nine twenty four on a, a a driving rally that the bid nerds, our friends, the bid nerds, oh, yeah. um, yeah. put on. Uh, ahead of the Lufkakult show. Um, and so they all had their very expensive air cooled cars, and I was slumming it with my salvage title $2,300 9.24 on 20 year old tires. That you couldn't shut off. <laughs> no, that was the BCR. That, that oh, one I can shut off. It just had like ice skates for tires. Um, yeah. And then, and I think that's kind of it. But we, well, we got we we to do went, more. We went future. to Radwood. And SF, that's which right. was a fantastic. Did Radwood, Radwood SF hat tip to the fellas there. That was a really cool. That ended up being a cool venue. I got a little bit too much sun, but oh, it was super warm. Yeah, yeah, but it was good. Yeah, it was like the warmest day of the year in in the city. Epic location too. Like that was very cool. I hope they do it there beautiful. again. Yeah. If and anyone complains about the sun, that's on them. Yeah, I hung out with up. those guys for Morning Motors down in. Uh, that's right. Beautiful Santa Cruz. I took the Trooper down of all, yeah, all the vehicles I could take down. Boy, that was fun. Uh, it, of course, performed perfectly. Got a lot of attention. Uh, really cool truck. Uh, on 17, watching guys going <laughs> to the show, just whipping past me. they like, that's Chadwick. <laughs> there he is. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that that was fun. But back to the rally, man. That Sierra rally. Uh, you took the S2000. I took the Cooper S. Two mm -hmm. very well-suited cars for that kind of driving. Yeah. Let's be brutally honest. Like, kind tools for the job. 100%. Not really our MO. We usually show up with something crazy and stupid. <laughs> but like we we brought two like finely honed tools and we both had a blast. I think both cars yeah. were more that was than good. capable. Yeah. That was good. Your wife had fun, my mom had fun. Exactly. Uh, the, the crew the drivers, yeah. The crew the crew had fun and um looking forward to the next one. I feel like I feel like that was too cheat code is not the right term because it it wasn't totally yeah. crazy. It was just too proper of a vehicle for that which is kind of yeah, as you said not our mo and also like i don't know it wasn't it wasn't um there wasn't enough danger in it for lack of a better way to put it like the, there was very limited threat of mechanical failure true and i kind of like there to be a little hint of like i kind of want to get to the end of it and people to go wow dude i can't believe that car made it all the way through this without a single hiccup like yeah. I kind of want a little bit of that. So I wanna, I wanna does that mean something... I have to go shopping? I don't know. Maybe, Maybe. I want to, dude, I want to bring something less capable because even with a, a pregnant <laughs> passenger, mm -hmm. I still pushed, I was able to run with the, I ran with the fast boys, most of yeah. this one. And, uh, that, and that's, I'm dry. I was the only one in a factory Cooper. And it was just that car yeah. is the threshold of that car. Tires, is... tire, tires, man. Like oh, it's, it's... The jet out of the box handling though. I mean, yeah, dude, that oh, yeah. car is it's unreal. That supercharger too, just the things it can hang with out of on corner and like exit. Oof. So good. <laughs> yeah. It's just, they should be worth more money. And I understand why they're not because everyone's mildly afraid of them. And some of that is earned. 
It's because the subsequent ones with the uh, direct injection too. really hurt the reputation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and BMW themselves, like mm-hmm. BMW ownership generally, it kind of hurts their first, reputation. Those R53s, though, they're the most robust. And I, I see them eventually being worth some cash for a clean one, especially mine because it was like stock and low mileage. But yeah, um, and, or J, like the, the JCW ones with the agreed. full factory JCW yeah. double package cars. Those are going to be those are going to be worth something. Because yeah. it'll be another one where, like, find a clean, low, low-ish mileage one. You're not going to be able to. Yeah, you can't. Um, you can't find because they got so cheap. People drove them, so finding low mileage ones is actually a real challenge. And dude, that what a what a great car for hooning around in general. It's just it's a brilliant little car. You know, might be good for it. Ha! Huh. Remember that uh, 2004 Audi S4. That, no. uh, is that car no. nation that like you won't perpetually... even make it two hours into the rally, dude? I don't know, dude. I don't you... know. <laughs> I, maybe let me Strong remind the possibility the, the listeners where frank's like check out this v8 powered uh s4 04 05 which year was 04. it it's an 04. 04 i get i get almost i get right on the exit or the enter entry ramp you to got the a quarter mile yeah so i'm going on there all, the battery light comes on and i'm like nine times out of ten it's an alternator failed on a modern car or a belt win limped it back it was a belt it shoot yeah. a belt but yeah it, well the tensioner shit the bed right that it chucked the belt it was right when you were leaving the house i was like hmm that's a new noise it's making oh well then you cruised it in i was like oh it's not making that noise anymore yeah and that's what it was it was the tensioner was it was shit it got quiet when that that battery light came on and then uh Beep-oop. I think later it had a catastrophic oil problem. So mm-hmm. yes, I got <laughs> as it. they do. Got it fixed. And then yeah. And and for for the listener, yeah, that's not my car. It's a car donation car. Sure. I was getting prepped up to image so we can I can go ahead and, and sell it at auction. Um, and then every time I touched it, it, it decided to be an a, a B6 Audi S4, which I love those cars when they're driving. I when they're yeah. when they're driving properly, they're they're pretty enjoyable. Good like car. in a vac yeah. in a vacuum, they're they're really fun. Yeah. I just love the power. Um, it's like a perfect amount. It's just like it'd be a killer daily driver if, oh, if hell yeah. If oh, it wasn't we'll drive, for the beating problems. Oh, we'll drive V8 manual. I mean, how yeah. do you how do you fuck that up? Audi yeah. did it. But well, it's just, yeah. yeah. Timing <laughs> chains and oil leaks and, uh, and all kinds of other stuff. Oh my. But and I and I'm all about being your guinea pig test driver. So as soon as you guys think that's good enough for another test drive, just give your boy a rally. Holler. Straight into the rally. Let's oh, go. Fuck, Let's effing go. Somebody um, bring a Corolla for a back. What do we vehicle. what do we want to do? Is there any, do you got a, a, other than like taking something sketchy on, on the next uh, multi-day rally of, of, of some flavor? Yeah. Um, do what, is there something, anything you want to pull off in 2024? Like, are you, is there like, Ooh, I want to do this event or I want to, I've always wanted to purchase a this or a that, or I want to get, I, I want to do, we, we had our track day episode. Yeah. Um, we got to get to we, the track and, this year. Yeah. Like, you know what what what's your thought like what what are you looking forward big to? big goal is getting through these long term projects i had the nx 2k the the nx 2000 mm-hmm. uh, i want to finish that car and I, speaking You're of rallies right? i would yeah i'm pretty close i need to do the clutch cable which is a real bear to get in and get installed correctly i need to do a bunch of cosmetics and then there's like the admin stuff like this car is not a california car so it's never been smogged so you know you know how that can be sometimes this insurmountable uh wall mm-hmm. to get over so i i'm facing that cosmetics might be out of my league but in general i've got the car dialed in it runs it drives does all that stuff that would be a fantastic rally car when i get it dialed in because i think it's a good blend of oddity it's got an SR20, so it revs high. It's fun to drive. Limited slip. And I did coilovers, you know, corner mm-hmm. balance the car. It's going to be a good, I think it would be a proper rally car. And, you oh, know, yeah. T-tops. So, you know, good sense of occasion. I think it's a very cool car. People would be, you know, entertained by it. I'd be very entertained. Um, yeah, so that would be, be the fun. goals Goals with that one. But also, man, I just want to get through, like, I'd love to get my Galant up to speed uh yeah. really want to want to finish that thing off because it's absolutely brilliant and i could go and drive it right now it's like but i want to do the time belt i want to do the water pump to be safe uh and all the other stuff and a couple other cars like the zr1 love to take that out oh man yeah you know? i'd really like to, i'd really like to see that thing going sooner than later like yeah. it's just what it's i don't want to call it an all-time car but it kind of is kind like of it's is. a re, it's a deeply special thing yeah, and whether whether you like the C4 Corvette or not, or whether you just like there, there's a lot of reasons why people don't particularly love those cars. Mm-hmm. I just think they're 
eminently cool. C fours um, are great. I think, and they're they're starting to get that attention they deserve too. Yeah, and I don't know if they'll ever do. truly get all the attention that they deserve. Mm. Um, for a lot of reasons, there's quite the stigma with those cars. Um, but it's cool, man. I mean, I don't know, like eight year old yeah. me, seven year old me thought the C four Corvette was the coolest thing on the planet. Um, and so I will always carry that with me. And that's like the most badass version of that. And it was like, Oh, just look at the history of that car and what, what, like how that thing came to be. It's just, it's really cool. So I'd like to get an opportunity, uh, to drive yours once you get it going. Cause, yeah. um, it, it's, 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 it's something cool. Yeah. It, it'd be a great car to finish off. And, you know, a couple other things like that Eagle summit, super looking forward to get that mm -hmm. running for some reason. I just think that's going to be an endearing car. Uh, yeah. just the, just the way it is and the story behind it. So uh, we'll see. Those are things I want to do. That's why I'm kind of holding on the project car buying front. I'm, I know we always do this every year, but <laughs> I'm not going to buy like aim to buy a lot of cars unless it's yeah. like something I can turn around or do something with, uh, you know, I think I'm happy with the TSX for a while. It kind of fulfills exactly what I want for a daily. Um, I'm a two spider. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I'm probably going to need a sports car if I don't fix up the zero one. So uh, I got a lot of cars I need to get out. So those are my, yep. my big goal for 2024 is get through my inventory, right? Like yep. get everything drivable. It's senseless having, you know, a garage. And eventually I'm going to have to consolidate. I'll have to leave this beautiful shop space behind. And no. it, we're going to buy a house together and, you know, kid on the way and all that kind of fun stuff. So as long as it's got its own monstrous shop space, or you just, you just have, you just, crack open some sort of like uh off-site workshop situation you know yeah it, and, and then and then i can i can i can rent a corner of it from from your boy and uh <laughs> and and store some stuff in there you know i mean this is this out. is such a sweet setup here uh but yeah it's an enabling setup so <laughs> i gotta i gotta get these cars out the door man how about you 2024 grandiose goals? um i, I don't want to i don't want to continue to like just flagellate this this deceased horse about selling cars um yeah, so man. just i'll just leave it at that like i gotta thin her a little bit and okay. probably buy one or two things hopefully really cheap and silly um i've been looking i've been looking for like first gen two-door pathfinders loosely oh, and i like looking, those and i've been looking for like finding a subaru justy or that uh i sent you the reliant rialto right yes <laughs> Which you is also, like the, the elder statesman. That twin cam, that Nova yeah. twin cam you sent me got me super excited. If you guys don't know, uh, the Nova twin cam is basically effectively a Corolla with a 4AG engine in it. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. you sent me sedan. an auto. Corolla sedan. Yeah. You always send me the autos, Frank. And, and I can't blame you because that's the first one of those I've seen for sale in like 15 and years. And it's clean. It's really nice. It's like, God what was it, like 100,000 miles? Like, yeah. yeah he like, wanted like 5,400 or something. Like, I'd get it for five all day. And I'm like, ah, I don't Yeah, know. if it was a manual, I was like. Oh, if it was a manual, we wouldn't be having this. Con we, we'd, we'd be, be like, oh, I got to reschedule the podcast. I'm driving a no, we'd be record. We'd be recording it live from the road. <laughs> so, like, uh, you can, one of us can drive it back. Like, that's what it would be up, up to Oregon. You, you know um, what I would do, though, is pull that shitty Toyota engine out and put a, you know what I'd put in there? Um, On four, baby. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. I'm joking. Yeah, buddy. I'm joking. The 4AG is why you buy that car. Yeah. Yeah. What a what a fun, what a fun little thing. But wow. yeah, I'd like to get something like incredibly silly and frivolous. Um, preferably somewhere like several hundred miles away, so I can drive it home in some kind of madness cannonball run, like full of danger and emotion. Yeah. Um otherwise, I would like to do. We talked about the track event. I I want to try. We should do this one day. I know so I almost did it once with somebody, um, but did, never got around to, to to pulling the trigger. Mostly because the day that I was supposed to do it, it was like 108 degrees, and I was like, hell no. Um, I want to do I want to do a rallycross event. I think that would be really fun if it's if so we fun. can if we can get our hands on if if something like truly ruined, um but running comes through car donation and they're just about to pitch it to the wrecker and it's preferably rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. We should just scoop it up. I don't know, like paint some God awful livery on it, like a big sausage pizza livery or something oh, and, yeah. and just, and just run that thing um, <clears throat> for the lols. I don't know. I think that would be, I think that would be really fun. That'd I would like an opportunity to yeah. do that. That'd be an absolute blast. Um, uh yeah and 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 otherwise i don't know we can keep doing this thing 
right? Yeah. We'll keep doing probably we'll keep probably should. Yeah. We probably should. Won't get sponsored, um, but we'll keep doing it. Oh no, I mean, I, uh, ty- uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, you mucho ma- the, who does the mucho macho tires? Oh. The, the the Tony the Tiger guy. He said he said we're not ready for Tiger Pons. <laughs> no, okay, no, we're not. No, we're not. There's some Ling Lings. Um, what else do we want to do for the Bro, rest of this did, show? You know what I just- I realized I like I made a list of like impossible cars to finish next year. I forgot the Blazer and the Neon ACR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's I'm good for 2025. I don't need to buy any more shit. <laughs> Are you sure? No, it's okay. I'll <laughs> I'll continuously send you links to nonsense that they find. You know what? You know what the secret is? I'm just, I'm gonna let between only you and I. Because mm. let's face it, nobody listens to this dog and pony show. Yeah, this is like a this is like a video call. <laughs> and maybe you, maybe you know this. Maybe you don't. Um, but the sneaky best place in the country to find weird and freakishly preserved 80s and 90s oddity cars guess where 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 would where in your opinion might that be i mean california is good cuz the avoidance of rust but the sun is bad arizona you find a lot of cars that didn't rust away boy Bro, pack you- northwest there is no, some for should. whatever reason yeah, i'm telling you, you sure? go go on when we're done here go on facebook marketplace just do like a 250 mile radius of seattle mm-hmm. search and just search for some bizarro car or pseudo bizarro car mm. and just see what's there right like you will you will like oh my god there's like i searched i, I couldn't find a single like subaru justy in california so i searched in that area and there were like six. Well, that's Subaru country up there, though. It is. But like, even like, look up. Um, that's where that Rialta was, that that R- Reliant Robin and Drag. God. That's where that's where that twin cam was. Okay. Uh, the Nova twin cam. I, for whatever reason. A lot of characters up there. That's probably a lot of characters, which is that that's our people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I'm telling you, do do a search up there. Plane flights are cheap. Get that $99. Um, uh, whatever they call it on Southwest fly to Oakland one way ticket. Come on down, do it. Good. Yeah. That's a that's great advice. It's just what I need to do. <laughs> Speaking of things that we need to do, I believe, I believe it's incumbent on you to um, uh, ruin me with, with quizzature or is it the other way around? I think yeah, you're quizzing me, homie. I'm quizzing you. Why don't you okay. explain to our listeners this little fun game? You know what? I'll, I'll get something open. I up. will. Ooh. This game specifically, our print ad quiz game, is one where uh, my friend, your friend Chadwick here, is going oh, yes. to um, uh, find some sort of a print advertisement, maybe out of a magazine, from the 80s, the 90s, up until the mid 2000s. He's going to read the type copy from that, redacting out any of the overly identifying bits and pieces, kibbles and bits. Mm-hmm. And then I get 10 minutes when he's done reading it and up to three guesses um, with maybe a hint or two ask if I get anything wrong to try and guess the make model um, and ballpark year of this particular vehicle. Mm. I think I'm ready. Feel free to play along at home, take notes or don't. Chadwick, are you ready to quiz upon me? I am ready, my friend. And I think I found a good one. We haven't done this car yet. Mm. This the specific car. So it's kind of cool. Uh, First off, it's broken down into its single pager. Uh, the vehicle occupies the upper one third of the page. It's a kind of driver or passenger side three quarters, more of a side profile. A uh, vehicle is in red, looking real mm. good, real fucking good. This is just, it's kind of a hit to you. I fucking would love this car. Okay. So, okay. The tagline at the top, the big, the big headline, if you will, it's a technical knockout. Oh. The tail of the tape, keeping the boxing team, mm-hmm. says it all. Weighing in with 210 horsepower. Okay. The 24 valve, twin mm. dual cam, V6 mm-hmm. blank, delivers the knockout punch in seconds. One look at its imposing body shows mm. you why. It's pumped to the max and holds its ground with the help of a rally tune sports suspension. It moves on aluminum alloy wheels in 16-inch high-performance Goodyear Eagle GT Plus 4 tires. And it stops with computer-controlled anti-lock brakes. The new blank 
technically speaking, it's pure blank in motion. Ooh. Interesting. That's the ad, my friend. And I'm starting. Mm -hmm. I I will say this is a four spicy level out of five. I was going to say it's fairly difficult, but I kind of, oh man, I kind of like it. Okay. So it's red. Mm Mm-hmm. Twin cam, two hundred and ten horsepower. Yeah, V six. Um, twin dual cam, which is my favorite. It says word. twin. Uh, well, okay, fine. it does V6. say twin dual I cam. Yeah. I get what you're trying to do. <laughs> um, two hundred and ten horsepower, rally inspired. Yep, suspension, rally tuned, rally tuned. Oh boy, okay. Okay, process of elimination. Um, <laughs> initially, the bo- all the boxing references made me think maybe this was a Subaru SVX um, with its boxer six cylinder, but like um, uh, that, that 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 doesn't that doesn't track. They didn't mention all wheel drive, and it's that was two hundred and thirty horsepower, not two ten. Two thirty five. Two thirty five. Uh, well, also, it's a they definitely said V six. They did. They did. Um, it didn't mention power but this absolutely feels like it's a front wheel drive vehicle i would have loved if this was a mazda mx6 or probe but it is not too much power to be unleashed too much power he says um it reads like a gm ad Hmm. um but GM was not particularly big on dual overhead cam V6s. And I can't think of a specific captive import that, that they, they would have done there. There weren't a lot of domestic twin overhead, twin dual overhead cam V6s. Right. Yeah. Um, at that power level. It's an interesting car. This is a very interesting car. It definitely is. So it didn't did I'm sorry uh, uh, quick clarification did it did it say coupe my brain p- is picturing coupe I but, don't think it said whether it has a sedan or coupe style Okay it does not God that ad reads like a coupe ad though hmm. Um cuz it's pumped to the max It's definitely pumped to the max Best line This is not a Dodge Avenger um, because you would not desperately love to own a Dodge Avenger. I the uh, gen I actually the, or, yeah the OG Dodge. Find Avenger. one of those. Find one of those. Even even something like a third gen Eclipse was not a dual overhead cam motor. Hmm. This is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. I'm not upset about it though. Um. We're going to get you there. Don't worry. Rally, rally bread. Um, excellent silence. <laughs> um, get us going in the right direction. You're, you're nearing the six and a half minute mark. I would. Oh boy. There's something remaining, else. remaining or used remaining. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, okay. I'm I'm leaning towards just taking a violent flail into the dark. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking 210. Yeah. Boy. Um just just to just to put a little bit of rubber on the road to to stick with the the, the parlance here goodyear eagle gt plus 4 rubber yeah yeah which helps which helps which doubles me down on on the domestic thing here um there's some clues in the speak here i think this is too late in the game but i i might not be brutally off on this I'm going to say this is a 1997 Ford Contour SVT. 
to 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 i'm oh man i i think i'm a, a tick off there because i want to say that was like 225 but i'm 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 gonna I'm a take this punch i'm gonna get on the board i'm gonna say this is a contour sv team definitely a knockout but it's not a tactical knockout this is not yeah. the contour sv team my friend okay cool car though definitely want to own one of those yeah um what, what can i do to help you get there because we just crossed the five minute mark I've I've really, especially with the Goodyear Eagles. Uh-huh. I'm I'm I feel like this is a domestic manufacturer, plus plus a type copy. Is this something that is sold by a domestic manufacturer? This is indeed sold by a domestic manufacturer. Okay. okay. Um the more I continue to think about all of this, well, shoot. I don't think this would. I don't think this is the middle trim Dodge Stealth. It could be. Um. But even that, I think I think two ten is not quite right. I think those were like two twenty, two twenty five. Um. But everything of that era made two hundred twenty five or two hundred thirty horsepower. In, in in a six cylinder, um, a lot of stuff did, yeah. This does not read like a uh, a tour show. You know, this is going to be my. Uh, yeah. I'm not terribly happy with it, but I'm just I'm going to say this is the Dodge Delft RT, not the RT Turbo. I'm going to say this is call it a 1990. To Dodge Stealth RT, the front wheel drive one, right? The front wheel drive version. This is not a Dodge Stealth okay. RT, my friend. Okay, I didn't think it was, especially since your your loins are aching to own one, and you've already had a Stealth RT Turbo. Yes. Um. So with three minutes remaining, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, 1992 is exactly spot on. Okay. And I got more hints for you. I'm going to read oh, the boy. last line. Okay. The new blank, technically speaking, it's pure excitement and motion. Okay. So what Pontiac yes. are we talking here? Because I was thinking Pontiac, but like the 3800 rule generally ruled the day. Overhead cam. Exactly. Um, Great motor. I, the only thing I can think of is if this is no, that's not right either. Yeah, like later, 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 later. No, I was thinking later down the road and a three, four or the three, five grand ams. But I don't, I don't think that's right because I don't think those were ever in a 24 valve dual overhead cam i think those were all either i think those were all cam and block i don't think they ever made a, a, a dual overhead cam version of that motor so a 210 horsepower it's wild was there in 92 it's a very rare car too just a, another bonus yeah and and but even something like the mclaren Grand Prix and stuff were still cam and block V6s. So the only thing that leaves me here is if this is a captive import, maybe. Which in 92, under the Pontiac name, oh man. Mm. This is going to piss me off when you tell me because I'd be like, this, this is a very, this might be a four and a half spicy even because I know you're not as well versed in shit box as I am, but this is a very, very special. No, box. this is 50 seconds remaining, sir. Okay. It's front wheel drive and two door only. Right. Golly. Okay. This is a 30 seconds
This is a 1992 Pontiac. That's I'm 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 just gonna say it. I'm gonna say it's a 92 Pontiac Grand Am GT. Final answer, and that's not it. But at the buzzer. It is not a Grand Am GT. This is an exceptionally rare Grand Prix GTP where they featured a 3.4 liter dual overhead cam V6. They did have a dual. What, what was, was that? The only one. It was the only one that had that, and it was exceptionally rare. And you could have a five speed manual. So that was, that's, and that, that year is, that's the same body style and chassis that they had the McLaren versions, right? Yep. The tw- they had the Turbo Grand Prix as well, which was totally a different engine. Right. Uh, and the standard, like you said, the three fours before this, because this is right. a 3.4, uh, right. were the single, like the single cam. Right. Motors, yeah. Right? With like 160 horsepower, 165. Yes. This yeah. had 210. They put in everything. They put, in 19... that, they put that in a Camaro and Firebird. Yeah, this thing was different, though. This was 210 out of a 3.4 in 1992. Was that the same outrageous. block, just with a different a different head? Uh, as a or is that... Engine. Or is it... Well, oh, so everything ground up? Yeah, this was a very special... This was like... And they're so rare. I think they numbered in like the, the low hundreds or like maybe a thousand, but you could get it with a manual, which I would probably Grand murder Prix. someone to get a... Look up 92 Grand Prix GTP. That's what I'm looking at. I want to look up production numbers. GTP production God, so numbers. so goddamn cool, dude. Uh, well, no, that's not right. Um... Yeah, very low. Na, 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 na. Yeah, I don't actually don't even see a breakdown. Maybe they, who knows? GM they probably could just be like, we don't fucking know. Yeah, we built um, so many grand prix. Yeah, we're too busy building, driving excitement over here. Just, me, uh, just don't even get to know. For um, those watching, I'll flash you the ad so you can. Bop, bop. You can see. Yeah. Here. What a what a thing! It's funny. I just well, searched you know, that it, up, and it, like, there's no. It's got some unique body styling, uh, some yeah. wire mesh wheels. Uh, I always thought the front end of those cars were, were was pretty appealing. What a great time to buy a Grand Prix because you can get a quad four, you can get the three one V six, or you can step it up. This was the the premium. I would murder someone to get this uh, dual overhead cam, five speed manual, two hundred ten horsepower, and ninety two is no joke. Um, guess according to this random website that I just googled. Guess what the uh, the zero to sixty is. I think it was in the sixes or low sevens. Six nine. It's really fast for a Grand yeah. Prix. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of power. Like, and think of that tech. Like you said, like a dual overhead cam and a front wheel drive Grand Prix is like unheard of. Like the the Quad Four made one eighty at one point, and this one just eclipsed that. And a five speed manual. The more I'm looking at these, like, dude. The I more I, the more I'm the more I'm into it. Um, I'm really into these. It's bad. Yeah, talk about driving excitement. Yeah, and I'm, cu- I'm curious, like what, like the whatever they call it, like that, the LT69 or whatever number that they give the gave this motor. Yeah, um, that was bespoke. What a bizarro concept, though. Like just the one, one and done, and that was, I don't know, just with regards to building that engine out. Like, yeah, the well, the GTP. Um, you know, I think they might have stuck this in other things, like the Beretta GTZ or something. I think they did use this engine more than just the Grand Prix, but. The GTP was always the pinnacle of like the Grand Prix, yeah. right? Like they, they yeah. came with superchargers after a while or making, which is funny because they had a supercharged 3.8 making like uh, 240 at the mm-hmm. at the end run. This is like after a whole yeah. decade after this. Yeah. And that's it. Making 30 more horsepower with a larger displacement and a supercharger. Get out of yeah. here. This motor was where it's at. Man. All right. Put it on cool the car. list. Put it on the shopping list. You said you're not buying anything this year. Guess oh. what? Search you're gonna you're gonna find one in the Seattle metro area. I'm telling you, in the pack northwest. Oh, it's getting bought. It's getting bought. It's getting botted. Um, valiant of, effort, though, my friend. Valiant effort. Ah, I appreciate. That was a four and a half spicy out of five. Tell you what, though, I told you it felt like a it felt like a GM ad. You were <laughs> like off the rip. I was like, this feels like a GM ad. Nothing um, hidden about that. No, not at all. Um, pumped to the max. Pumped to the max. So. PC note. Yeah, we should we should um do make poor life choices and uh do PCP project car progress. Um you make any make any progress lately? This is this is the end of the year. People so, are like doing family things and keeping busy. 
I have, and I and I haven't sent you uh, a photo. I want to. I don't have it on my phone. I'll, I'll send it to you later. Um, so the the TSX has not been all flowers. So hmm. when I bought it, the front bumper had a pretty good hit on it, and I was like, man, it's really sagging down on just the passenger side, like two inch gap uh, below the headlight. And I'm like, man, it must have hit something pretty hard. And the fog lights were both cracked, which is standard on these cars because the fog lights are actually glass and they do shatter. Uh, so to replace them, you have to pull the bumper anyway, right? So I pull the front bumper off, Frank, and the crash uh -huh. bar on the passenger uh -oh. side is like folded, like a perfect like V. <laughs> and I'm like, Bro. hmm. So someone put a new bumper cover on this car at one point and still had a little skiff, a uh, little little you know scuff afterwards. But yeah, that was a big hit. So whoever didn't report that accident, uh, luckily. Radi didn't it, it barely butted up against the condenser for the AC, so no damage there. Everything still mounted correctly. So all I had to do was source source another crash bar, which is like super not expensive. Yeah, uh, they're easy. hang the bumper back on there correctly. Had to uh, source. Did it have a Did it have a, a foam absorber still? No, they never had one on this one. It was just pure <laughs> bumper and then uh, the bumper overlay, the bumper skin, uh, the crash bar bumper skin, and then I just basically hung everything correctly looks brand new brand new fog lights i installed i did uh headlights restored the lower grill was pushed into all the tabs were broken so i reinstalled that so it was tight uh did a bunch of other stuff and uh it looks freaking perfect dude uh, i'll send you a photo i'll send you a picture yeah. of the crash bar it's hilarious <laughs> but you could well, the good thing is on on those too is thankfully on a lot of those it wasn't the it's generally not on those where the the that impact beam bolts directly to the end of the frame rails they usually have like a, a mount of metal extension that's got some like you know ruffles cast yeah. into it what's well, got so the square so box. it'll bend yeah, yeah it's got the square box that it mounts over so uh yeah. none of that was tweaked and luckily it hit like it was a sharp object i'm guessing it was like they either hit a tree or a pole or a parking like one of those concrete things because mm -hmm. uh there was no damage anywhere else because anywhere lower would have been a shit ton of damage anywhere higher would have crushed the hood and all the yep. bin numbers match on the car so no panels were replaced uh pretty scary to see that though when you're digging into a car right you're like oh god here we go we're down mm -hmm. the rabbit hole of hidden crap like salvage car that was brought back but uh honestly like i wasn't too too sad about that once i found it, it was a little shocking and then repair i did take the bumper off anyway but now it looks brand new so that was exciting but that's a lot of work dude uh doing all those kind of those repairs take a lot of time and just getting it yeah. just right so it sat right again and wasn't all flimsy and stuff one of the mounts for the headlight was broken so i had to repair that <laughs> yeah um but you know little stuff like that and then obviously i sold the asuzu trooper we uh we took some amazing the, the, photos. the one right behind you yeah yeah so uh, <laughs> the one that's currently still in my life uh by the time this probably airs hopefully it'll be gone uh but uh cars and bids and we had a really yep. good showing frank uh took some amazing photographs of the truck like it was honestly like i looked at all the other things currently for sale and it was the most highly viewed by quite a margin yeah uh because yep. two things you the photos speak for themselves were absolutely exciting we had dirt bikes jumping in the background <laughs> it was just freaking gorgeous that we, went to, off, we went to an off-road park to shoot it. it just made sense uh and then on top of that like when's the last time you saw a really cool CZ Trooper five-speed manual two-door yeah. running? Uh, so it got all the attention and sold for a fair price and the new owners excited. And there were tons of people bidding at that level. So it wasn't like a lone yeah. high bidder. There was, there was some strong competition. Yeah. There were like four or five bidders at the end um, yep. and, it, and it ran it up. And so, yeah, it's um, I, it, it had its moment in the sun. It got all the views and it earned it. It's a fun, it's a fun truck um, as we discussed earlier. So yeah, um, Glad to see it uh, going on to a lovely new home. You get an yeah. extra parking space. Um, and I've made no proje uh, project car progress. See you later, everybody. <laughs> Again. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've, it's, it's been a busy week or so. I'm trying to think if I've gotten anything done. Um, Again, just on other people's cars, um, just ticky it. tack stuff, doing more photo work for on other people's rides. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah like i my one friend I'll, I'll try and make this incredibly brief i've got a friend she's got a like an 05 prius mm. it was parked at her uh, parked at her house this she lives like two and a half hours away is this somebody a stole the cat story? off it yeah. yep somebody stole the cat off of it mm. they went through insurance they had cover they had full coverage on it mm. somehow even though it has like one primer quarter panel um, 245,000 miles 
and um, all, all everything that comes with that, they didn't total it out. They paid like hmm. 3,800 bucks or whatever to put okay. a brand new OEM catalytic converter on it. Shit. And then like six weeks later, after all of that was back, she ran out of oil and cooked the motor. Oh, dude. So <laughs> it's been sitting at her place up in the middle of nowhere, Somerset, California. Hmm. Um, and, uh, just waiting for me to find a reasonably okay catless Prius down here in the Bay through my car donation guys. Cause that happens a lot. So, there were six somebody, of them at one point when I was there. there yeah. The, for whatever reason, that wave of, of cat thefts, um, I don't know. The rings are getting broken up, I suppose, because it's not happening nearly as often. Hopefully so they're they falling. Got one in. The Prius is the pre I are falling on the cat thieves. That's my, that's my hopes. That could be hopes it. and yeah, prayers. Could if be. You will. Exactly. Thought, uh, T H O T's and prayers. <laughs> and so uh, one finally came through identical clone to theirs. Um, so we used the old triple A toe to get it from her place down to where this other one is with my car donation homies. Um, it all the, the one that came in had a missing cat and a, a bonked battery. So it was kind of worth nothing. Um yeah. for, for so for fifteen hundred bucks roughly, um bought that one, then paid this other guy I know who's like the Prius Whisperer to swap the battery and the catalytic converter over and put a cat shield on it. Um and swap the wheels and tires because she had fairly new tires on hers mm -hmm. um for five hundred bucks. Dang. Okay. Um Drove it around, instantly settled, and this one has one hundred and seventy-seven thousand miles. Ooh. So, just found a just found a free fifty thousand miles. More yeah. than that, dude. That's seventy thousand awesome. miles. Um, and yeah, past fog, ready to go. It's at a detail shop right now. Um, because I, I was able to set the monitors real quick. Um, I, there was some some loose ends I tied up on it. It's getting detailed, and it's going to be back on the road by the time she does registration. Um, and everything she'll be in it, probably the whole project, 2,500 bucks. That is sweet. Yeah. And then the old Prius will just go to South, go to the salvage auction. We'll go to Copart and probably sell for that 1500 bucks. Right. Anyways, yeah. roughly. Cause that's roughly, that's how we cooked up what that sale price would be. So then she'll get that credited back minus say a hundred bucks for fees and towing and stuff. Um, and yeah, hopefully she'll be around a thousand bucks done um so a lot of coordinating got that done this week it's being detailed and that'll be that'll be a good thing so um again doing a lot of other people's projects <laughs> none of OPP. mine opp o baby exactly other people's projects pcp and opp and nice i think that's all she wrote yeah let's well let's close her down again guys we we thank you uh mm -hmm. for joining us Again, another pointless automotive podcast, APA podcast for those who don't want to That's right. type a lot of shit out when you're searching for us because no one searches for us. But you can follow us, listen to us anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Also, feel free to review the show. Leave some feedback. Yeah, uh, that never helps hurts. us. Yeah, it helps us a little bit. Give us a good old rating. Uh, ask us questions. Follow us on social media. We have a YouTube channel where we put every episode out. Uh, if you like the visual uh interpretation of this uh the horse and pony show uh i don't know who's the horse but um it's definitely not a donkey show i mean it should be at this we point. quit we quit that at like episode 14 yeah i get we got we got a i'd like to say we we got uh what is it called we demonetized but we've never been monetized and we're a far right. shot away from that so but we do appreciate it guys also, Instagram. I don't even know if we've yeah. ever. Are we going to lose our Instagram if we don't post there soon? Yeah, uh, that might yeah, be we'll the case. Get, we'll get pulled over to Parlor. Is that still a thing? I don't even know. Um, yeah. MySpace. Catch us on uh, Friendster. Yeah. No, we appreciate it, guys. And uh, Frank, where can the good folks follow you? Uh, the photographer's garage on things. That's it. How about wow. you? That was good. Yeah. Uh, Auto obsessive garage. You know, rescues, restorations, reviews, mostly on YouTube, Instagram. But anyway. Mm -hmm. We love you guys. Thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you in the new year. Ooh, which apparently will be spooky. So spooky. Ooh. Take care as always. Peace.